Hey, Eli here. Today I want to talk to you about the Sony A7C2 paired with the Tamron 28-75-2.8 to version 2. Uh, got the small rig grip on the bottom. And yeah, very compact kit. Uh, not as compact as some of Sony's, um, you know, small prime lenses that they make for this, for this body. Uh, but it's still pretty compact. It's probably the biggest lens I'd put on this for, you know, I guess using it a lot. Um, it's still kind of... A long lens, a little heavy, but it's much more compact than the 28 to 70 from Canon, or even the 24 to 70 from Canon. Probably weighs about the same with the body as the 24 to 70. Uh, don't quote me on that, but that's just how it feels. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a it's a fun little kit. Um, I have had it for about a month. I picked it up from Adorama, and um, it's been been fun. Um, I've always been testing out gear throughout the years. 17 years I've been shooting, a camera nerd, so just. Always just trying to play with new stuff, so you're just kind of along the ride for this one. Um, you know, these are just my opinions, and so I just want to put another opinion out there so folks can make good decisions on purchasing. I use YouTube a lot for my own, you know, choices and what I pick uh, for gear. And uh, yeah, also, yeah, just learn a lot from YouTube. So this is uh, something I've been using for a month, uh, personal use only. Uh, didn't really take it to any jobs, didn't have a lot of jobs this month. So it was kind of nice. Um, the ones that I did were just quick, and so I just used what I knew. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna just gonna share some images with you today and my thoughts, uh, likes, dislikes. Uh, I mean, you can't really go wrong with modern cameras these days. They're just all so good. It's just a matter of what works for you and what you're doing. Um, so yeah, things I like. Uh, this this Tamron lens is great. It's super small, compact, sharp. Colors are awesome. Um, these, this 33 megapixel sensor itself, I picked this one over the A7CR just mainly for price. Um, I do prefer the 33 megapixel over the 61, but I, you know, I can work with either and, you know, it's not a big deal, but, um, yeah, it was, you know, it's cheaper. I think I was all in $3,200 for this kit and, um, I would probably pair this with like a really ultra wide if I was going to travel with it just so I'd have that uh, available to me. Uh, but yeah, so... The Tamron lens is kind of cool. You can set this focus ring here to um, aperture. So that's what I did. And then you hold the button to change back to focus. So you can go between focusing with the ring or you can use it for an aperture. There's obviously no clicks. And I did bump it quite a bit, um, you know, but quickly figured out, oh, I'm at the wrong aperture. If you hold down the button, you can go back to focus. Uh, but yeah, just a great, great lens. Um, I think this would be paired with any Sony body and it, it'd, it'd be great. Um, the, Canada, the, the, the body itself, the A7C2 is, it's pretty compact. Um, you know, that's a plus and a minus. I've got big hands. So with the lens this size, it's probably not the best pairing, but you know, that's just where I want to go with it. I, I prefer zooms with my kids and my, my kid, one kid. And, um, yeah, it's just a lot easier for me to get those images, those moments and just be quick with it. Um, you know, I, I do like some primes like, you know, the Q2 is fun to use, but I just, I love that versatility. Um, it, this is, so pros would be, it's a great camera, great sensor. The autofocus is just next level. I'll show you a sample of me just running around the backyard being silly and it just, uh, being very positive to confirm that it's focused on my body or head, even when eyes aren't in view. The, uh, R5 and the R6 II are incredible autofocus systems, R3, but I just get a little more positive feedback with this, um, AI autofocus that's in the A7R5 and the A7C2 and the A7CR, so, um, and I'm sure the A9 as well is great. But yeah, just get a little more positive where you know it's like, oh, it's tracking that part of their body. You know, when the face isn't in a view, it could be their neck or their head or their arms. It's, it's really cool. Um, all right, so positives, high ISO. This thing just kills it. Um, I've got a couple samples in here I'll show you uh, versus the R5, and, you know, they're, they're pretty comparable, a little bit sharper with the Sony. Uh, it seems to be the, the theme uh, with a lot of the images. Very, very sharp. Um, the dials are awesome. You've got multiple dials uh, to choose from. I set aperture to the lens, so then I had one, two, three, four dials to pick from to adjust other things. So exposure compensation. Um, I There's no joystick, so I did set this back dial down here to adjust or to move the focus point around. So that, that was a quick fix for me. But if I was going to use this for professional use, I'd probably prefer to have a joystick. Uh, yeah, I can get around it, not a big deal. But, um, but yeah, one thing, another thing about the autofocus, I kind of treated this just like uh, point and shoot somewhat when it came to focusing and let the AI control. 
And so nine times out of 10, it picked what I wanted to focus on and then I could toggle the focus point on and off. And it was kind of nice to not have to hold a button down for eye autofocus, but just let it do its thing. Um, you know, getting into drawbacks like the EVF in the screen, and it is nice to have an AI autofocus system that works really well because you can't really <laughs> see in bright daylight. It's kind of hard, um, but it, it was it was pretty darn accurate. Uh, distances, up close, just very, very impressive. I think probably one of the best autofocus systems I've used. And, you know, if that's something that you're looking for, then this is probably a good answer for that. Um, and the IBIS. I got this down to one second shutter sitting on my couch, just taking a picture of um, something on the wall. And that was really impressive. Uh, something that you know is appreciated and you don't notice it till you don't have it uh, you go to a camera with not as good of an ibis and you're like oh well i really do need that so kind of a, a nice plus um all right so positives negatives would be uh the evf and the back screen you know they're not i mean it's not a deal breaker by any means but it's not as nice as you know it's not as bright as my canon ones and obviously not as nice and um yeah, every time I pull this up to my face, I feel like I, uh, I'm getting punched in the face by a little piece of rubber. So <laughs> uh, I have to be careful uh, with that. Just just be you know conscious. And then it's you know a flip out screen, which you know I've gotten used to. Not a big deal, uh, but definitely not the best screen on the market. But it works. You know it'll get the job done. Uh, but I do you know appreciate my Canons being very very bright on the back screen and the EVF. And then you know the Fuji is just next level when it comes to the EVFs. Uh, the 102 other negatives um no joystick um the buttons are a little small not super tactile so just trying to feel around um you know it just takes some muscle memory if i got gloves on a little harder to use but again uh just set it to auto iso and uh, used the exposure comp and you know it was pretty pretty easy to you know get everything that i wanted uh, pretty much left it at 2.8 when when i didn't bump it <laughs> um but yeah and then single card slot might be a deal breaker for some. I use uh, Lexar, SanDisk, Sony, and um, now OWC cards. Uh, the only card I've ever had fail on me has been a Transcend card. I've never had a card just completely just crap out. Uh, I have had a SanDisk kind of just like every 10th image would be corrupt, but um, 17 years I've not had a card fail other than those two instances. So um buy good cards and i think you're not gonna have a problem and if you're really worried about it and you want this camera you could just buy smaller cards and you know just keep changing them out that way you don't lose everything but um but not a big deal for me you know i don't, I don't think it's a huge deal um and yeah uh, plus and minus it's small so it's if it's you want a compact camera it's great um i've got big hands i i'm looking at um there is a grip that's wood that gives a little more depth to the grip and I feel like that would help give me a little more leverage on it, um, you know, or, you know, I mean, the pinky does help. I can't get my full hand on this, but, uh, but yeah, I think that would help a little bit. So what else? Um, yeah, I mean, just really fun kit. So let's pull up some images. We'll check those out and uh, just kind of share. We'll start out with an autofocus. Uh, so what I did with this, this kit is I kind of want to break out of my own. I get out of my own way. I, I bought uh, Force Megan's presets uh, FM7 just because I want to just try something different. Uh, his style is a lot more different than mine. Uh, I've been following him for years. Uh, amazing artist. And so I was like, every year I'll try a different preset from someone that doesn't shoot like me and is different. So they just break me out of my own mold and just see what is out there and how I can change things up. So, uh, of course, I've tried all of my presets on these Sony files and they work pretty well. Um, you know, I think the colors are very accurate. They're good. A lot better than they used to be. They were never really bad. Uh, I think that the A7R3 I used for two years and amazing images I shot with that. And then when I went to the Canons, I did prefer the way they edited, but, um, you know, I didn't hate Sony. That was for sure. But I do think that Sony's come a long way and gotten a lot more pleasing, uh, a lot prettier. And dynamic range on this thing is great. So... Cool. Let's, uh, these, these are the presets that I purchased from Forrest. I purchased the FM7. And we're just going to jump through some images. And these are just personal trip. I took a trip to the coast with my family and, just, and then around the house. Uh, not a whole lot going on. The weather's been a little crazy. So there would be some snow in here. And yeah. So let's check these out. Ah, first things first. Focus. So here is me just running around the backyard like a maniac doing cartwheels. 
and you'll see the positive confirmation that we're going to get. First, my eyes are in focus there. Yep, and then I'm going to track my head. Just follow me around. Of course, it's only going to work when the shutter is depressed, but we can see it's following my body and cover my face. Just really cool. Uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know what more you could ask for. All right, cool. Let's jump into some images. Just my wife here. Um, these did end up on the higher ISO because I had it on auto, so it, it compensated pretty hard to be, you know, high. And up to 128,000, I got some great images, providing that the light was good and the exposure was on point. Uh, when you start to edit those, you start to have issues, but you can see how sharp this is. Uh, this is for Seeger preset, and then I just kind of, I pulled off all the grain um, and then just edited it a little bit different uh, for myself. But, um, but that way we don't see any, um, you know, grain that isn't there from a high ISO. And my daughter, up in there close, getting a little soft, but we did, I did push this file a little bit. Um, we are at 2,500 ISO, still holding great. I mean, pretty amazing, just outside 100 ISO at 2.8. This lens does get a little bit of like green fringing around certain areas you'll notice in some other images. Um, I can find it up in here. Yeah, a little bit of chromatic aberration. And, you know, it's not the best at that, but I don't think that's a big deal, especially for personal use. And just breakfast. And here we are at 3200 ISO. I mean, that's just so good. You know, we've come a long way. <laughs> we used to not shoot over 800. So here we are at 640. Two eight. I'll include some of these images for you to check out, pixel peep, and play with, and edit. Twenty five. And I have no problem putting this on auto ISO when it's good up to eight thousand or one hundred and twenty eight or twelve thousand eight hundred. Sorry, twelve thousand eight hundred. We'll get into those later. But just the focus for a kid running around, great. I liked this image because it just had a lot of blues in there. And you can see that little kind of chromatic aberration on the edges. I think that's what's going on. Maybe it's just a reflect. I don't know. <laughs> you can play with the images and see. But just images like this are, are where I love having a really good autofocus. Where I can just capture the moment. Quick and easy. This camera turns on super fast, which is a key. Even my R5s now these days feel a little delayed when I turn them on. This one's slightly out of focus, but still love the image. He's running around, being crazy, having fun, playing. And just here on the coasts. Yeah, pretty much everything was 2.8 unless I accidentally bumped it. Beautiful coastline shot. And just those seals hanging out, very, very sharp. And just a boat heading out to sea. Yeah, a little bit of distortion going on. That's probably part of the correction. We'll turn off. All right, so this one, if you can see the lens profile is on. If we turn it off, you can see there's just a little bit of distortion where it's starting to bow. So not a huge deal. I mean, this lens is somewhat of a budget lens, but uh, when you compare it to the actual Sony lens, 24 to 70. Uh, but this thing does focus extremely close. Uh, we'll get into some later where I think I was like an inch, two inches away from a snowflake. And tilt screen or flip screen, you can do selfies if you want. It's kind of nice. Just documenting my food <laughs> and ice cream. This is just, yeah, so sharp. And again, just very, very, very sharp. I'm sure the A7CR is great as well, and probably sharper. So, 500 ISO wasn't super bright in here, so I think I brought this up a bit and it handled it well. And then just a bunch of just random images, just documenting their trip together. Very sharp. Just jump through these a little faster. 
Again, some of these will be available for you to play with. Don't want to bore you too much. Yeah, 160th, very steady. And this one's pretty cool. Um, for some reason it's showing, yeah, uh, there we go. All right, so yeah, this one's very cool. Uh, you can focus super close, uh, even at 75. I was pretty close. And yeah, maybe it's a little soft. I'm not sure. Like, oh, I did crop that. That's why. <laughs> but yeah, I cropped it really hard. Um, just a cool image. And then just the bay there. And then this one's kind of fun, just showing that, that bokeh. Um, the sun setting, really pretty. And just more coastline photos. Little cutie. So then I went out, went hiking, Smith Rock, close to my house here. And Smith Rock's very interesting because the colors are very close to skin tones. So it really does tell you how skin tones are going to play out when you edit them. And so when you're playing with these, something just to note, there's not a lot of separation between uh, people like there is when there's greens and stuff. But yeah, just something to note. All right, so here's a snowflake. Let's see. Yeah, I cropped in that far, you can see, and I was, yeah, super, super close. I mean, almost the lens was almost shadowing the snowflake. So pretty, pretty cool. Uh, that was at 28, I think. Yeah, 28 mil. And then just some more Smith Rock. And then us up to the top. And lunch after. And then here's just one in the house, all just all daylight, midday, 5,000 ISO, looking pretty clean. And then 5,000 ISO as well. And then this just makes for great black and whites. This is at 12,800. And yeah, this image, there's no grain on here. Let me just double check that. Yeah, no grain on here. So this is what you get uh, in low light. You know, if you're in, in good light, then it's not a big deal. And then here is another one at 12,800. And you start to lose some contrast, but I still think it's just a great use, a definitely usable image. It's just very impressive. And then here we have one second shutter, and we can see how sharp this is right here, this map. This is where the focus point was, and just it's just crazy, <laughs> pretty neat. You can focus that, or go down that low on the shutter. And then in the arcade at 12,800, this is just crazy. Look at that, so sharp, very impressive. And just outdoors, this lens does have some flare, but I think it's pleasing. It's not a big deal for me, I think it's fun. 100 ISO, nice and sharp. And just the kid being crazy. I mean, look at that, 12,800, 12, just nuts. All right, and then a couple more of those. Another one, 12,800. I just had a cap at that. That way I didn't go past it. Um, here's a little comparison we got. So we have Canon is red on the right. The right is Canon, on the left is Sony. Just gonna zoom in. I don't think these are edited as far as color temps, but you can see right here the difference. They're both at 12,800. 4,000 on the shutter, so it was um, daytime. I just wanted to get the high ISO. So we've got good light as far as like, there's light coming in. But uh, yeah, so just something to note and check out. And then 6,400 ISO, colors look great. And 1,000 ISO, no problem at all. And then just a little hike behind the house, very sharp. Good colors. Yeah, I love this skin, looks great. Great skin tones. And yeah, these are just like, I'm not even really looking through the EVF. I'm probably just pointing the camera, you know. 3200 ISO, it's just little moments like these. Nice to have a camera in the living room. Just capture something quick. It's grown so fast. And then here's one at night 
We've got Sony on the left, Canon on the right, and you can compare these and see for yourself, but I would say Sony's got a little bit of an edge. I don't say it's a huge deal. Maybe you might think it's different, but download them and you know see for yourself. But I think, yeah, Sony's winning here on this one. So pretty impressive. And this is here is what will uh, happen if you try and push an image. So we're at 12,800 and I'm just gonna crank up the exposure and you'll see it'll start to fall apart. So when you don't have light, it can be a little harder to edit these images. You lose dynamic, you start to get some grain, the dynamic range there. So cool, cool. And then 100 year day, this is at 4000 ISO. There's just like some cloud morning light coming in. Uh, it's not super bright, but man, this, this is uh, mostly probably from the lights in the house because they're really warm. But yeah, look at that, 4000 ISO. Um, and this is outside of 2500 ISO, still pretty cloudy early morning, but yeah, really clean. And then this one I just bumped accidentally to F22, so I figured I'd include it just so you could see. Um, we're at 2500 ISO, so it's starting to get a little, little grainy, um, but yeah, maybe a little diffraction in there, who knows. I should go out and tripod it and test it out, but, um, but yeah, cool. Well, there's some images for you. Um, you know, it makes me think a lot, you know, testing this out. It's so small. It's just nice to have like a compact, it's mostly compact kit. Uh, frees you up a lot more when you're working um, or just trying to take photos. Where the 28 to 70 is an amazing lens, but man, it is a little bit of a, a bear. Um, you know, and I wonder like, you know, with that little extra few stops of high ISO or stop of high ISO, do you need an F2? And then going from 70 to 75, is just a little bit extra, you know, depth, a little more compression. Uh, I've noticed the, the field of view shrinking, but you know, if you have room to back up, it's, it's probably a plus. Um, but yeah, really, really cool kit. Um, I think it's fun. Uh, now I got to decide if it's something I want to use for professional, professional use or just for personal use or, or what. So that's on me. It's on you to decide, but I think it's definitely 100% capable of professional work. Um, one card slot, that's up to you. But, uh, you know, I don't have a problem with it. As long as you buy good cards. And every few years, I will switch my cards out. So I try not to keep them over four years, maybe three max. You know, if I sell a camera, I'll sell a couple cards with it and then, you know, replace those. Memory cards have gotten a lot cheaper. And then, uh, yeah, so these are my thoughts. And all subjective, of course. And I hope that it's helpful. And if not, you can just, uh, you know, not watch it. So <laughs> have a good one. Catch you later.